Hi guys, okay, welcome back to another video on the channel. And this one is not going to be very long. And it's inspired by a question of uh, one of my members, um, Mike, stunt flyer. And he emailed me the other day saying, Andy, could you explain a little bit more about all the little bits in the export module of Darktable uh, than you explained in the video where you were talking about external editors and the Lewis script plugin and I'll make a link to the video somewhere up here now okay so you can go and watch that this should be entitled really how the bleep do I get my pictures out of dark table and so yeah well, let's do it so we've got our carefully crafted and processed image, images in dark table in the dark room and the only thing that is of any importance really when it comes to exporting is the output color profile and you can see because of my normal workflow i've got this set to pro photo and that is um, the uh, gamma corrected uh, pro photo by the way not the linear pro photo working profile so let's head off over to the light table and uh, basically we come to the export tab so the first option we've got is target storage and if we click on this little um, arrow here really and truly the only two that are of any use to you are collection and file on disk latex is a whew, it's a piece of typesetting software actually so if you were going to be using latex to do the layout in a book then i suppose this first option uh, might be of interest to you. Puigo, that's sort of an online photo management software called gallery thing. Collection is a little bit confusing, um, but when you watch the, or if you watch the video on 32-bit HDR, where I was sending it off over to uh, Photoshop, when you uh, export to collection it brings the image back into your light table view and once it's inside your uh, light table view you can then select it and then open it with an external editor that you've plugged in with this uh, external editors Lewis script control up here uh, I've already done a video on that as I said the link was prior and I'll put it in the description below if that is of interest to you. So really and truly, back to collection, we've got file on disk, which is obvious, but we'll go through again in a minute. Email or website gallery. Um, neither of those would be of any use to me. So if we stick with file on disk, now by default, Darktable will put the exported file inside the folder or the parent folder of the original raw file that you've been working on. Uh, but it will put it in a subdirectory. It will create a subfolder in there called Darktable underscore exported. And then it will put the file name in. On conflict, create unique file name. That means if you've already done it once and you want to do it again, it will put it in with the file name as it was before, but with an underscore one after it. So uh, that's that. So file format options. TIFF, we have all these options here. The only ones that are any useful to me, of any use to me, are TIFF and I suppose remotely 8-bit JPEG. But other than that, no. I'll just leave it at TIFF for present. Uh, bit depth, 16-bit, 32-bit uh, float, or 8-bit, okay. Keep it at 16-bit for a minute. If you were selecting 32-bit float, or, you know, you could, be, you could be talking about a 16-bit float, actually, if you wanted to do that sort of thing, um, you would take that from unsigned integer to floating point. 
but if all you're after is a TIFF or a JPEG to be exported from uh, Darktable, you need to select unsigned integer. Compression, that should be self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> deflate or deflate with predictor. Yep, um, uncompressed. Black and white is grayscale. Defaults, yes, so just leave it at yes. Now, these global options, I'll demonstrate this in a minute because it's a little bit weird, but you can actually dictate the size so you can basically shrink it uh, to the required size or you can allow for upscaling so you can upsample it so you can produce a file which is actually bigger than your raw file in pixel dimensions. I would always keep that set to no. High quality resampling, uh, yes or no, I don't know. I would probably turn that on um, if I was shrinking the image down. Profile, image settings. So this is where, if you remember when we were in the dark room and we looked at this picture, the output profile was set to Pro Photo. Right, so you could actually leave that set to Pro Photo, but then when you, what you could do is you could specify, say, sRGB if you wanted to or anything out of here. But you, this is sort of independent of what you've got set inside the dark room so to speak so uh, that's that uh, intent if you don't use little cms i'm checked over in the um, properties and uh, settings um dark, uh, dark table from what i can gather uses its own sort of uh, version of uh, rendering intent so what I would do is I would switch it out to a known one, which would either be perceptible or relative colorimetric. And just so you understand the difference between the two, relative colorimetric, all the colors contained in the image will be converted into the output color space, which if it's smaller, say sRGB, would result in the possibility of some of the colours contained in your process raw file not actually fitting in the sRGB colour space. So basically all the colours that will fit in get put in the image, all the colours that won't fit in get replaced by their nearest possible neighbour that will fit. Okay. Perceptual squishes and squashes everything so it will fit, but that can lead to colour shifts in your image, in your output image. Okay, so the colours might be slightly different, slightly skewed. So uh, there you go. I personally always use relative colour metric. And uh, so, and style, um, well, you know, if you've created some personalised style for your images that you want output, that you want to... Uh, apply to your output image then fine fair enough i always just want a a smaller version of uh, what i've just created and i don't want anything doing to it so i would never use that so basically let's go uh, with this image and we'll export it two or three times and uh, under various guises so the first one we're going to go to is uh, file on disk um, into a subfolder of the raw file parent folder called dark table exported and um, we'll go for a 16-bit TIFF unsigned integer uncompressed and we'll just go export and this is set to output with the image settings profile okie dokie so it's exporting the image now now I'm leaving it with a rendering intent of um, Darktable's automatic one. So if I now come to uh, that parent folder, and uh, there it is, that's the one. It's, um, no, nope, that's the one. I should have dumped the other two. Uh, 1042, that matches up with the uh, 
uh, clock on my computer so I can right click open with uh, Photoshop and there it is it's uh, 16 bits per channel pro photo RGB right that's lovely so what we'll do is we'll come back to dark table and then what we'll do is we'll switch this out to JPEG 8-bit and we'll go for a sRGB WebSafe profile and we will change the rendering intent to relative colour metric. And so what this will give us now is a JPEG that's the same size as the RAW file. Okay, so we'll click Export and uh, just wait till it flashes up that it's actually finished the export process uh, which i think it has now and we will go back over here there we go it's exported it uh, come back here and there is our jpeg and so we will open with and i mean you don't have to be using photoshop you could be using gimp or whatever and uh, there we go so this is now in the sRGB profile as you can see and it's 8 bits per channel and if we go to image image size 8268 so it's full frame because that's the size of a Z9 raw file okie dokie so it's exactly the same size as this TIFF uh, we go to image the image size there you go 8268 lovely jubbly and um, we go click cancel on that and we'll come back to uh, dark table and now we come to the uh, sort of mystery meat and um, we can actually shrink the image now yeah, there isn't a uh, check mark here to maintain aspect ratio or automatically maintain aspect ratio um, which I always thought was a bit of an omission but here's the thing set size if I just come in here and I go um, 1200 okay and we leave everything the same and we just go export and uh, we're going to get a file conflict obviously because we've already got a 3051 jpeg in there so now we've got a 3501 underscore 01 jpeg and let's go and have a look at that um, go back to finder and there it is and uh, we will just right click and we'll go open with photoshop and there it is, it's sRGB, 8 bits per channel. But if we come to image, image size, there we go, 1200 by 801. So if you want to maintain your aspect ratio uh, of your image and also reduce it in size at the same time, when you come out of the dark table, all you really need to do is to put the long edge pixel dimension that you desire in this first box here and leave the other one set to zero if you actually put a value in there it will resize to whichever one fits the best and the other one will be either reduced or expanded it's, it's a bit strange like if i go to the 720 by 480 rather like that and we keep everything the same and uh, I'll tell you what see if this makes any difference high quality resampling let's put that on sRGB web safe uh, profile relative color metric rendering intent export um, I don't know what number it will come up with uh, here for a unique file name uh, let's just wait and see there we go 3051 underscore zero two so let's come here and zero two there it is right click open with uh, photoshop and uh, better click cancel on that and here it is and right it's a right tiny little thing isn't it 
So we put it, we set this to 720 by 480, didn't we? And if we go to image, image size, you'll see it's 480, but it's not 720, it's 718, because 720 by 480 didn't match the aspect ratio of the image that we were using as the parent for the export. Okay, so uh, there we go, cancel. And uh, let's come back to dark table. And I think that's just about everything covered for the export dialog box in uh, dark table. So now you know how to get your images out of uh, dark table, don't you? All right, guys and gals, hope that was useful for you. Told you it'd be a fairly short one. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something useful out of it. Uh, cheers for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Give it a nice comment below. Um, push it out to your friends because we need all the subscribers we can get. Yes, we do. All right, guys. Stay safe, stay well, keep taking the pictures, and I'll speak to you soon. Two root.